Okay, well, good job team. We figured out the sine, cosine, and tangent for alpha. Uh, but now we have to go on to our next task, which is to figure out the sine, cosine, and tangent for theta. Well, the first thing we should do is erase this asterisk and move the asterisk over here to theta. Now we're going to be focusing on theta. And we know that when we do that, the side that used to be the opposite is now going to be adjacent. You can see that this side is now adjacent to the asterisk, and the side that used to be adjacent is now going to be opposite. You can see that the side of length 3 is opposite to theta, but the hypotenuse doesn't change. All right, so don't be too proud to put these labels into your picture. Label the hypotenuse opposite and adjacent sides until this material becomes very straightforward and easy for you. And now it's a simple matter of plugging in. Um, the opposite side is 3, and the hypotenuse is root 13. The adjacent side is 2, and the hypotenuse is root 13. And the opposite side is 3, and the adjacent side is 2. We could leave the answers like that, or we could do our divisions. 3 divided by root 13 is 0.83. 2 divided by root 13 is 0.55. And 3 divided by 2 is 0.67. Again, if you're alert and paying attention, you might be kind of starting to see the relationship between the sine of alpha and the sine of theta, or the tangent of alpha and the tangent of theta. But I'm not going to cover that explicitly. OK, um, the one thing I just want to point out to you is that certainly the sine of theta is not the same as the sine of alpha. The sine of alpha was 0.55, but the sine of theta was 0.83. So it certainly is crucial to put the asterisk in to remind yourself which angle you're focusing on. Uh, and again, you would never just want to write sine equals. It's meaningless to say sine unless you say the sine of what? You have to say the sine of theta equals or the sine of alpha equals. Don't just say sine, cosine, or tangent without specifying which angle you're focusing on. All right, some of you might be finding these problems very easy, uh, but if there's anyone who's finding them difficult or who finds they're making a lot of careless mistakes, it's probably because you are being lazy and not using the notation that I've been putting on the board. So if you're finding these problems challenging or that it's easy to make careless mistakes, use the full notation that I've been putting on the board. Use the asterisk, label the sides that are opposite hypotenuse and adjacent, and write down the general formulas before you start plugging in. And certainly everybody should always, every time they're working with a sine, cosine, or tangent, they should make sure that they got the general formula correct by muttering under their breath so, or ka, or toa, depending on whether you're working with a sine, cosine, or tangent.